One thing I do notice with the Everything Code is, yes, there's a lot of people who kind of understand it, but there's a lot of people are in total disbelief. People just say, it can't be this easy. Like, huh. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. And if it's not until everybody believes in it that then it's more likely to be super wrong. Bitcoin could jump to dollar one hundred ten thousand on its next major rally, despite concerns of lower highs and lower lows forming as a pattern on the BTC price chart. According to crypto traders, the next leg is likely to bring Bitcoin to dollar one hundred ten thousand. Founder of Vana Capital, Michael Van de Pop, wrote in a July seventeen post on X that this, even as other traders point out, Bitcoin is failing to reach previous highs, with each new high falling short of the last. Veteran trader and analyst Peter Brandt stated in a July 17 post on X that the sequence of lower highs and lower lows continues despite the having, the etf, and the hype. Vandepop doesn't seem as concerned linking Bitcoin's recent volatile price to the struggles faced by Bitcoin miners due to rising operational costs and reduced mining rewards following the halving in April. He noted that the true hash rate drawdown at its last low on July 1 was as heavy as during the FTX collapse. Since Bitcoin reached its all-time high of $73,700 on March 13, it has breached the $71,000 mark several times but has yet to reach its record price again. There were also nine consecutive days in July when Bitcoin failed to breach above $60,000, which hadn't happened since February 28. Bitcoin's recent low of $54,200 on July 5 was the lowest price the asset faced in four months, according to CoinMarketCap. While the timeline for the next leg is ambiguous, other analysts are offering slightly more certainty regarding when Bitcoin will breach the $100,000 mark. Riot Platform's Vice President of Research, Pierre Rochard, believes it could happen at some point before July 2025. Bitcoin could go to $100,000 over the next 12 months, Rochard wrote in a July 17 post on X. Other traders are more conservative. Crypto trader and investor Marco Johanning suggests Bitcoin will not go to $100,000 at least not this time offering a prediction nearly 19% lower. The new low at $53,400 changes the targets for Bitcoin to $81,000 or $94,000, he added. Uh, right. Hearing the opposite opinions, you know most of them are just not very grounded opinions. They tend to be from you know, the peanut gallery about, well, inflation's coming back and it's going to be the 70s over again or whatever. The now it's, you, you can kind of discount all of that stuff unless somebody has a reasonable argument in a way that why liquidity wouldn't come back, how they could allow the debt to refinance. The only way for me is somehow GDP growth has to magically, trend rate has to change. And that can't happen, I don't think, till about 2030 when the AI and you know the infinite population of AI and robots kicks in and productivity from lower electricity prices and all of this. I'm like, I just, you know, unless you could show me one of those things that's, that's uh, going to change the game right now, can't see it changing. This is why I'm really passionate about where the future of social tokens and digital network states and you know tokenized smaller economies, because yeah. that creates community and capital is the same thing, and they tend to be right. different. Um, and right. so I'm seeing this blending of community and capital everywhere. Um, you know whether it's whether it's GameStop. You know, in the last cycle, or even a bit this cycle, or whether it's crypto overall. But I do think that social tokens, in however, whatever format they end up being, we're still testing them between NFTs and, and memes and all this stuff. It's all around the same idea. But somehow we're going to tokenize economies better, small economies that you can participate in. And now you've got capital in them. Before, right. you just couldn't do that. But the issue is, is a lot of what is quality the social consensus it's like you, you don't really know um that's true you know, i was having a great conversation with meow from jupiter and we were t we were talking about the fact that utility in many cases is the least valuable part of anything if you think attention is everything and the more attention you get the more status you get if you think about the wine industry, Louis Vuitton handbags, all luxury goods, right? Their utility is actually very small. I yeah. can carry my lipstick and hairbrush and money in a bag. The difference between bag pricing is is attention and status. Um, totally. And so it becomes very difficult in how to think about these things in this new world. Now, it's, it's easy on the layer ones, 
because there's metrics. We talked about this before. But the further out you go, the less you have anything to measure this on outside of social behavior and somehow measuring it. And does it matter to somebody? I don't know. There's just something in understanding this. And we've seen it with some of the more interesting memes that have tried to have utility. The moment they do it, you can value them on yeah. cash flows and you just you just nuke the value because it's like, it's not, you shouldn't do that. You can't do it. No. But it, attention, it's... unlike a cash flowing business, cash flowing businesses, something you can value can drive investment over time. Means it's just as long or whatever it is, it's just as long as you can capture that attention. It's really hard to do. So <laughs> I figured out the easiest way to play all of this, including let's, including the move from two and a half trillion to a hundred trillion, the largest wealth in history. I just sat down and thought this thing through. I was at Beeple's studio turn of the year, and all of the big NFT people, you know, artists were there. And so were MoMA and so were Sotheby's and it was just a bunch of trad art people. And you could see, firstly, I, I realized I was teaching them about macro, how it drives the NFT prices, because they're artists. They're like, why is my NFT prices down? I said, it's nothing to do with you. It's the same as Rolex watches, the same with fine wines. It's driven by the business cycle, blah, blah, blah. They're like, oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and that, Raul. <laughs> um, so, because they were so worried about it. But, but what I learned from then was realizing how small a group of people really own the culture of the internet in that kind of way in art and that it's basically the art world splintered to is the generative artist so that probably started with um um cadenzas ringers and yeah you know, uh, auto clips being the primary example there's punks they're just punks and then there's ex Scorpion people who, who are culture. And when you speak to people, in fact, you speak to everybody in the space, they're like, well, ex Scorpion was there first. And he, and if you think of those two, they've been commenting on social culture, the culture of the internet, the culture of crypto from the beginning. I mean, people turns up every fucking day to put a bow around the internet and say, good night, everyone. Here's my comment of the day through R, right? Brilliant. Now, some of these you don't like, some of them you unite, but every single day, he's putting a bell on the internet and wishing everybody good night. And I suddenly realized, okay, if you're going to generate a lot of wealth, I've seen this before because a lot of my ex-colleagues were the big hedge fund managers who, who own the big hedge fund businesses. They became obscenely rich. What do they buy? Property and art. All of them. You know, many of them have got multi-billion dollar art collections. Then I remember the Russians coming in after the Berlin Wall came down. They started really getting wealthy in the early 2000s. Um, they bought everything in the art market and everything property market. Then we saw it with the Chinese. We saw it with the Indians. We saw it with the Silicon Valley guys. They've all done the same trade. And we're going to do that all over again. And what's so interesting is humans like to take a snapshot of culture from when the magic was happening. And we all know, Chris, that the magic is happening now. It has been for a few years because we're all one degree of separation from each other. And that goes over time. And right. So anybody who makes a lot of money is liking to celebrate this with high-end NFTs, particularly the culturally relevant ones. Um, because it's it captures this essence and then once you rinse $100 trillion of capital through, they just trade at infinite price.